Walter White, would you like an upgrade? You're goddamn right. I'm gonna take that as a yes. Upgrade, we shall. First off, two GTX 1070s from EVGA. Uh, these I paid for out of my own pocket. And I did this because I wanted two cards that matched. Now I know I already have one in there. That one's the one that's being given away, by the way. The uh, Asus ROG Strix GTX 1070. But I, I think that I can do a little better with the paint job, to be completely honest. And EVJ has built in white LEDs. And no matter what I try in the configurator for Asus, I cannot get those LEDs to turn white. So I think this is going to be a better bet. No big deal. It's going to look better in the long run anyway. Walter White version 2.0 will appreciate that. So of course, two of those. And then check this out. Azrock sent over there X99 Tai Chi. Now, I asked specifically for the Tai Chi because, as you'll see here shortly, it has a ton of white accents. Now, the, the entire PCB isn't white or silvery white like the ASUS Tough Z170 motherboard is, but it's close enough. Uh, and I think that it's going to look beautiful in the S340, and I plan on doing something uh, very soon with the S340 case as well. Stay tuned for that. And then to top everything off, processor. What do we have here? This is a Xeon E5 2630. I almost said that wrong. 2630 V4. So this runs at a stock 2.2 gigahertz, a single core will turbo up to 3.2, I believe, maybe 3.1. Uh, now this is essentially by all regards, except for the fact that it doesn't have an iGPU and it's not overclockable using uh, the multiplier method. It doesn't have an unlocked multiplier. Apart from that, it's basically a 6950X, and that's kind of why I chose it. I was actually originally going to purchase the 6950X, and a lot of you talked me out of that in, on Twitter, so thank you very much for that. But we're going to start assembling everything. I'm just going to kind of do it vloggy style like I did in the past. I think that that's the easiest way for me to edit, and it's kind of a more, I don't know, personal experience for all of you as well. So let's get to assembling tearing down things in there that we're not going to need and then putting the good stuff, the new stuff into Walter White version 2.0. Don't mind my bed folks, this is my office as much as it is my bedroom. I sleep right there and I work right there. But uh, I'm like a giddy little child this morning. This is the first time that I've ever moved up to X99. How the heck do you get this out of here? And I'm pumped because I'm gonna get to run so many new tests with a unique processor that not many people have. And uh, well, just see how well the Xeon ends up faring out in the long run. Installation guide. All right, gonna need that. Now this is cool, built-in Wi-Fi. So we have our Wi-Fi antennae right here. Antennae, how do you say that? Antenna, antennas? Maybe it's just a simple plural. And then right there, there's our SLI bridge. I think I was showing you the, what is this? This is an SLI bridge? Yeah, this is an SLI bridge. Well, you get two different SLI bridges. So if you want three-way SLI, you got this one. And then two-way SLI, you have this one here. So very cool that they include both there. On to the motherboard itself. Now this is where you'll get to see that whole color coordination thing we've got going on. Again, like I said, not a completely white PCB, but it's got some pretty darn cool accents, including that whole like clock gear mechanical thing going on. And uh, now a lot of that will be covered up by the two graphics cards, but not a problem. You can see our huge 2011 V3 socket, our eight uh, dim slots, and a lot of good stuff will go over here on the left side as well as the right. Dr. Debug down here, all your peripheral support, 24 pin power connector. Our eight pin is up here on top above the uh, X99 little symbol. Two M.2 slots on the front of the board. That's something I'm not going to be using right now, maybe in the future, but uh, SSDs are what I'll stick with for now. I think I'm probably going to paint this. I think so. Yep, I think I've made up my mind. I'm going to paint that white. And I will do so using white engine enamel. Oh my. Wow, this is a heavy processor. And much larger than typical Z170, Z97 CPUs. Even larger than some bulldozer pile driver CPUs from AMD. This is where things always get tricky because I want to get some sweet tech porn shots and oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, even though you can't read anything. There we go. Now we're talking. Look at that. First thing we're gonna do is paint this heat sink like we talked about. All it requires is the removal of two screws on the back of the motherboard. So one was here and one was here. And now, we flip the board back over. This should just, there it goes. I also want to open the 1070s because we need to decide what we're gonna paint on each of these. I'm pretty sure we're gonna paint the back plate. That's just typically black. And we might paint some of the accents as well. So let's see what we can uh, 
pull apart here. So yep, definitely painting the back plate. Let's flip it around, pop her open. Oh, stuck on that side. Look at that beauty. And guess what folks? There's one more. There she is. Now I'm fairly certain this one was used prior. I purchased this brand new, so this shouldn't be open, but it is. It's actually dusty too. And it's scratched up a bit. What is this? The back plate looks okay. But the front, check this out right here. It's kind of hard to tell. There we go. See those scratches? Those shouldn't be there. This is a brand new card, supposedly, but I know it's I know it's not just by looking at it. This one, on the other hand, is brand new. And if it's not brand new, they did a good job covering it up because, well, that right there. Okay, so as of right now, the front shroud of both the GTX 1070s are pretty much good to go. The back side's a little rough, but you're not going to be seeing that. And I was sure to tape off the, uh, the front LED panel, whatever they call this. So uh, I'd say it's a job well done for the graphics cards at least. The back plates are looking okay. A few spots here and there. That's just what I get for not using a professional paint studio, but I'm willing to uh, live with that. And the cool thing is because I'm using two, I can choose to put the one that looks better on top. So I'm not sure. Yeah, that one's got a few spots on it. That one has a few bubbles on it. I don't know. We'll play with it. And then lastly, the uh, heat sink on the Tai Chi from ASRock. That's a little rough. I had to completely start over. I was actually scraping off paint from that. I don't know if it's dry yet either, so I'm not going to touch it. That's one thing you definitely don't want to do when you're painting PC parts, when you're painting anything really. Uh, don't touch the paint until you are 100% certain that it is dry. Otherwise, you'll leave a fingerprint or you'll smear the paint and it will be just a pain to uh, try to correct later on. So I'm gonna let that dry a bit more. I'm pretty confident these are finished uh, drying, or close enough anyway. And uh, so we'll go ahead and assemble those back together and take a few more tech porn shots of the new white Superclock EVGA GTX 1070s. In case you're wondering, this is how I masked off that, I guess, front little panel here. This is what lights up. So it's EVGA GTX 1070. I'm pretty sure that's what it says on it. But I just took some cheap old tape and covered that up. And because I used engine enamel, I'm not going to have to worry about uh, the paint kind of stretching out and tearing uh, like you would have with Plasti Dip. So we should just be able to pull this off. I'm going to do this live because I want you to see the, the result, I guess, in person. I already did it with the other card, but this card here was a bit trickier. Sorry about this mess. It's, yeah, we're in hardware mode right now, folks. Get all this good stuff off of there. Just want to be careful not to actually pull the thing apart. As you can see, that's all still intact. No paint anywhere on that. And then very gently pull up the tape, going around. A little rough there, but mostly good. And there you go. That is, well, the almost finished product. I have to put this on the uh, on the actual card, which is sitting back there. That's how I, yeah, that, that's how I did that.
Well, uh, Walter White is having a few issues. Well, maybe just one big issue. It's not posting at all. Now, everything's turning on. I'll go ahead and do that for you right now, so we'll see. That's a fan scraping against something on that graphics card. I'll have to fix that. But, ignore that. That's, that's not good for the card, but we'll fix that shortly. So... Right, everything looks looks like it should be running. But if you check down here, there's a Dr. Debug uh, right, right back there. And Dr. Debug is not showing any code whatsoever. Which leads me to believe that there's some kind of power delivery issue. Or that the CPU is not seated correctly, maybe a bent pin or two. Well, that didn't take long. There is your issue, folks. At least that's what I assume is causing the uh, posting issues. One of these uh, from the cable mod kit just straight up popped out, so I was running essentially a 7-pin uh, EPS cable. That's not advisable, and so we're going to fix that and hopefully uh, receive a proper post this time. Well, folks, this is it. Walter White version 2.0 featuring the Xeon E5 2630V4 10-core 20-thread processor, two EVGA GTX 1070s and well i've recycled a lot of other things but i also have the asrock x99 tai chi i don't know tai chi but the motherboard sure does it's a beautiful white and well semi black pcb combo uh cool little you're seeing it right there mechanical gear looking design and uh, i just think it fits the build uh, very well and i'm glad i went with this board and not with something that didn't really match at all so it's nice to have those white accents on there now in terms of benchmarks i will have those ready for you tomorrow so i'm going to be doing cpu synthetic tests i'll be running some gaming benchmarks to see how this thing performs because we all know the xeons aren't really ideal for gaming especially when it comes to a uh, high core count and relatively low frequency so uh, we'll see what we can do there and uh, I'm, I'm just really tired this build took me two days to put together two full days longer than it's ever taken me to build a PC before, uh, mainly because I had an issue with the CPU seating. Speaking of that, I, I almost forgot to address that. So on Twitter and Instagram, if you're following me there, you, you knew that I was having issues with getting a post. So there's a Dr. Debug on the very bottom of the motherboard, and that's usually supposed to spit out some codes, uh, at least in the beginning, uh, when you first turn on your PC. And I wasn't getting anything, uh, not even a Dr. Debug notification telling me what was wrong with the PC. So the only two or three things I could think of that may have caused that uh, was the power supply. Maybe it just wasn't getting adequate enough power to the motherboard. I don't know why that would be the case though, because the power supply was working perfectly in Walter White version 1.0. Or uh, there was some kind of cable disconnection, which there ended up being. I don't know if that was what was causing the issue, though. I, honestly, I, I fixed that, and it was still having problems. So it probably wasn't causing the issue, but it definitely could have caused issues in the long run, depending on which of those eight pins uh, was disconnected. But then on top of that... I guess there was some kind of CPU seating issue. I, I, I put it incorrectly. I, look, this is my first rodeo. I kind of know what I'm doing, right? For some reason... Once I removed the CPU and reinserted it the exact same way, I'm telling you, the exact same way I inserted it the first time, secured it all back together. I mean, I was literally just right here. I just pulled off the, the water block and just reinserted it. That was really it. Uh, and then once I did that, I started getting posts and uh, I got readings from Dr. Debug telling me everything was a-okay. So uh, in terms of, well, just the science behind why that happened, I have no explanation. I don't know. Maybe, I mean... The, maybe just there just wasn't one pin contacting the CPU and maybe that was just the improper seating on my part I have no idea uh, but whatever I did reinserting the CPU so that's all I did fix the issue so I'm just glad it's working <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to start running some benchmarks I haven't actually done that yet I did run Cinebench I got a score of like 1280 we're gonna see if we can base clock overclock a bit and bring that score up I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that at all with this BIOS, just given the fact that it's a Xeon and uh, it doesn't come with an unlock multiplier. So we'll be stuck to just the base clock frequency. And on top of that, it's not drawing a, a ton of power. It's only got an 85 watt TDP versus the 6950X's 140 watt TDP, I think is what it is. So that one's clearly ready for overclocking. This one's not, which tells me that it's going to be pretty stubborn. But we'll see how far we can get. I'll include that as well in uh, maybe not the benchmarking video. I might try that later on just because I don't want any system instability in the meantime. It's getting pretty dark outside and that's my that's my LED panel most of the time. So I'm going to call this one quits. Thanks for 
watching me build this for two, I know it doesn't seem like two days to you, but it was two days for me. It's almost the end of the second day. I'm just glad it's working. I think it looks beautiful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Give it a thumbs down if you do feel the complete opposite. It's okay, you won't hurt my feelings. Maybe just, just a little bit. And then uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more stuff like this, including the benchmarks of 2.0 Walter White. If you want to know how the Xeon fares, 10 cores, a lot of cores, but it's relatively low frequency across the board. But we do have two GTX 1070s to pick up the slack. I don't know, I'm expecting it to perform around Walter White version 1.0. That's just because the 6700K in there is pretty much the best gaming CPU available, thanks to its very strong single core performance. I think the Xeon here is going to definitely hurt us, but the second GTX 1070 should remedy the issue, if not pick up the frame, rate, frame rates, frame rates a bit more. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.